After the Paris attacks, news reports surfaced saying a video game console had been found at one of the suspects' homes. Now, those reports suggested the attackers had used the console to communicate details of the plot. Those stories turned out to be inaccurate, but they are raising questions about new ways that terrorists can communicate without being monitored. CNET senior editor Jeff Bacalar is here to break this down with me. So, Jeff, thanks for being here, first of, of all. Um, so, a lot of people may not know, parents, uh, that... For example, you can use a PS3 and use multiplayer with a headset and you can communicate with people around the world using the game console. Sure, and it happens millions of times a day. But the interesting thing is that you don't necessarily need to be playing a game. You can have a conversation outside of a game within something like a PlayStation 4's uh, sort of uh, firmware. They allow party chat, they call it, outside of a game. And you wrote, you've written about this yeah. before. Um, what did you uncover in your reporting? So I wrote about a few years ago about uh, a lot of the awful things that were being said to players uh, during multiplayer matches. There were there was a sort of, and it's unfortunately still the case, there's a lot of racism, a lot of misogyny, a lot of just awful stuff happening during those matches. And we, you know, you know we talked to people from Xbox, we talked to people from Sony. Uh, Microsoft said that they actually had some provisions in place that would monitor in-game chat but they didn't really they were kind of dubious about the whole thing they didn't really say hey we can monitor every last word we have you know triggers that sort of get raised uh, if something is said they they sort of alluded to that but they never came out and said we have that technology I would not put it past something like that but again you know these things aren't necessarily monitored for what we're now getting a little concerned that maybe they should be. And the difficulty, I think, and what I've, the way I've understood it is that these communications are encrypted so that even the government, if they were to request that data from these companies, would not be able to access it. Um, I think there's maybe potentially a, uh, a mis sort of conception about how encrypted and sort of impenetrable these systems are. They're not, you know, we're not dealing with like, you know, NSA level security stuff on the PlayStation Network or <laughs> Xbox Live. Right. I mean, these are pretty surface level environments. So, you know, I think there is ways to do that, to get access through back doors and stuff like that. I don't think, like I said, it's impenetrable or invulnerable. But uh, right now, there is really no system in place that takes those networks and has a vetting sort of system where it's constantly being monitored. And that's the concern, right? Is yeah. that PlayStation, for example, if we just use one, they've sold millions and millions of these consoles and it would be very, very difficult to track the conversations, the communications that are going on between uh, perhaps people that may want to use those consoles for nefarious means. Sure, I mean, yeah, there's roughly 30 million PlayStation 4s out there. So, you know, tracking every last user uh, is not really a practical thing. I mean, on a massive scale, uh, I guess you could have services implemented that would do that, but look at, you know, uh, unconventional sort of messaging apps like uh, WhatsApp, WhatsApp and Viber, right. yep. where, you know, 30 million, that's a drop in a bucket compared to what With those the user base on. Right. And we've talked about how these are also sort of encrypted and, and not exactly accessible when it comes to security. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think what this does is it opens the door for the conversation saying, hey, this, we didn't really consider this as a vessel for this type of behavior, but it exists and it's out there. I guess the next step is, okay, now that we have that information, where do we go from there and how do we, you know, sort of ha let that coexist while also playing it safe? And it, describe uh, the kinds of communications you can have. You can have voice communications sure. with people. I could be sitting in my living room in New York City. I could be talking to somebody in France playing Call of Duty, yeah. right, on my console playing against them. And sure. the communications that I'll have over that headset will sound, if anybody's listening in and they don't have the context that we're playing a video game, I can be talking about blowing up houses and blowing people's heads off and, right? I mean, there's, yeah, there's a I potential mean, for that. You know, I do it every night. I, <laughs> okay? Yeah, I, me too, me too. Right, so uh, there's a big club, right? Right. And, you know, there's a lot of that. And these are channels that are not necessarily monitored. There's other ways to communicate, too. Microsoft owns Skype. Uh, if you have an Xbox One and a Kinect camera, you can use the console to video chat. Mm. Uh, again, these are just different avenues for communication that no one really thought, hey, you know, this could be potentially a safe harbor or, or a platform where this kind of stuff can take place. So these guys, if people wanted to exploit 
A, not only the ability to communicate in a way that is very hard to detect, but also the loopholes that perhaps might exist to prevent the government from listening into some of these conversations they, they could. Right, and it's a cat and mouse game, right? So you have, uh, you have this sort of thing that isn't necessarily monitored right now. Uh, I think the, you know, the, the sort of stories that have come out pointing the finger or essentially on, you know, revealing that, hey, this can be uh, an avenue for that kind of stuff, you know, that'll open the door to possibly, you know, having that monitored. It makes sense. Um, but, yeah, it, it's something that I think, again, we're not, you know, the, the stories that came out earlier this week, they turned out to be inaccurate. So that isn't necessarily the smoking gun situation. But it does open, people's, open people up to say, hey, this is something we now have to take into potential. consideration. Just as we have to take all the other messaging platforms that use the Internet to communicate as a potential uh, you know, vehicle for this type of stuff. Um, you know, it's not just the cellular network. You know, there's the, the Internet has uh, opened the door for a seemingly infinite amount of lines of communication, whether it's a PlayStation 4, a console. I mean, you can really... You know, we can figure out ways to communicate through unconventional means, and the Internet's opened that up. There really isn't a way to police the entire thing. And I think maybe that's like the sort of tragedy in all of this is that this is not something we realistically will be able to, to wrap our hands around. Jeff Bacalar, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's, that's really the, the thing, right? It's yeah, like it's we, like we just have to give... We